So today I'm going to talk about Twig, giving you some tips and, and, and tricks. Um, I'm Fabien, I'm the, the creator of Symfony and the creator of Twig. Um, and today we're not going to talk about the basics because I think it's covered pretty well in the documentation, uh, the Twig documentation and the Drupal one as well. So instead of that, I want you to give you some yeah, tips and, and advanced features that might help you in your projects. First of all, I want to talk a bit about the project's uh, life cycle because I think it's very important to understand what to expect from an open source project. Um, and the very first thing I want to talk about well, okay, um, is backward compatibility because that's probably one of the main features of Twig. And when I'm talking about backward compatibility, I'm talking about uh, the language, the Twig language, so the language you are using in your templates, but I'm also talking about the code itself, so the PHP code that runs and executes your uh, templates. So the main core language, the, the main concepts, um, haven't changed si since uh, Twig 1.0, which was released in March 2011, so more than uh, six years ago. So stability is very important for me. Um, that doesn't mean that this is the exact same tweak that we had six years ago, because of course we added a lot of features and, and we did a lot of improvements. Um, and, and actually we release on a very, uh, almost every month, um, new version of, of, of Twig. So right now the current version is 133. So as you can see, we have many versions. So we are using semantic versioning, which means that whenever there's a bug, fix, release, uh, we release a patch version, so one dot x dot y, and whenever we are adding a new feature, then we bump the, 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 the minor version. Okay, so we release very often, almost one release per new feature or uh, big bug fix. Um, and that's possible because we keep backward compatibility, which means that upgrading from one version to the next, upgrading from 1.2 to 1.28 should be very easy. It should not break anything in your code, especially if you are only using Twig as a templating system and you're not messing up with extension or whatever. And if we break something, if we break backward compatibility, and that happens uh, inadvertently, it's not on purpose, then we can fix and release uh, a new version really quickly. Uh, that happened actually last week, I think, where uh, we broke backward compatibility for a very, uh, an edge case, I would say, um, that actually affected uh, Drupal 8. And we were able to actually fix uh, the problem really quickly and release uh, a new version, which means that between the time we released the, uh, the version with the problem and the, and the time we released the version with the fix, uh, I think uh, it was less than two days. So upgrading should be a no-brainer, and that, that's very important. So if you are still on an old version of Twig, I, I only encourage you to actually upgrade to the latest version, because also we, we are trying to um, improve performance and, 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 and things like that. Okay, as you might know, we released uh, Twig 2.0 in uh, January this year. Um, it's not a big release in a sense that, so the first feature, kind of, is that we dropped PHP 5 support. Uh, so it's only PHP 7 plus. Um, we improved performance, mainly the file system loader. Um, so the impact is uh, quite interesting. And of course, the performance is improved if, if you are actually um, upgrading to PHP 7. Um, we also dropped deprecated features and that's the exact same, um, we are doing uh, deprecation uh, in the exact same way as Symfony. So whenever we want to remove a feature or change the, the way it works in Twig 1, we actually deprecate the feature so that you can get some feedback in your log saying, okay, you are using this feature is going to be removed in the next major version. So Twig 2.0 is the exact same set of features as Twig 1, the latest version of Twig 1, 
menus all the deprecated features. Okay, and Twig2 is also about a lot of internals refactoring, but I think you don't care about that. You should not care about that, anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, so, and so backward compatibility and the fact that we are releasing very often is part of the philosophy of Twig. And the, the, the other part of the philo philosophy I want to talk about today is that we have a small core. Um, we only have three different way of expressing something in a template. So you can say something, you can do something, or do or say nothing. So that's the commands. So the first two are very interesting, the third one not that much. Um, and if you have a look at how that's done, um, we have a very small set of tags. So the first one is what we call a tag in Twig. We have a very default uh, set of, small set of default tags. And um, for when you want to say something, we have just one concept, which is an expression. And an expression is composed of a lot of things, can be strings and numbers and whatever. But we also have tests, filters, and functions. That's all. That's all the concept that you need to understand to really master Twig. And everything is actually an extension, which means that by default, Twig comes with no tags, no test, no filters, no functions. Everything can be defined via extensions, even the operators, so plus, minus, and, and so on. They are defined in an extension. And of course, Twig comes with some core extensions that are enabled by default, but you can disable them if you want. So it's really uh, a small core by default. We also want to control the feature set that we uh, give you out of the box um, because we want Twig to be web designer oriented. So it's not really, we don't want to duplicate PHP in Twig. Quite the contrary, actually. Uh, and we are trying very hard to not have features that depend on the type, the underlying PHP type, for instance. So we'll say, I'm going to talk about that a lot during this presentation. Um, and that's related to doing the right thing by default. Um, and so no types means that um, as a web designer, you should not care about the fact that the variable is an array, a PHP array or an object, for instance, a string or an array. And I, I'm, I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, so the first one is, so that's an example, and is, it's also very interesting because it has a big impact in terms of performance. So Twig is quite fast because we actually compile, we, we, we convert your Twig template to PHP code. So it's really fast. There is one thing you need to be aware of, and that's the way you actually access uh, variables. So that's how you can access a very simple variable in Twig, so here we want to display the author, uh, created at time and permalink. Okay. So the overhead for that kind of templates is really small because at the end of the day, it's just PHP code. But now, if you're using the dot notation, uh, and you should use it a lot, really, it's two things. Uh, first, it's the way you can access things from a variable, but it's also uh, the slowest part of Twig, actually. So content.links can mean a lot of different things. So it can be the links item for content if content is an array or extends array access. It can be the links property on a content object or the links method or the get links is links or as links method. So that's a lot, right? And by the way, the last one is only available as uh, of Twig 2.0. So this is how we uh, actually resolve uh, the dot notation. And that's what I was talking about. You should not care about if content is an array or an object. You are using the dot notation, and that's an abstraction that we give you. That's nice, but then, of course, uh, there's an impact on, on terms of uh, performance. So the first tip is, so there is always a trade-off between performance and abstraction. Um, 
And here, what you can do instead of saying content on links, if you know that content is actually an array, you can say, okay, I want to use the first one. I want to use, I want to get the links item from the content array. It's less flexible because if at some point you want to change content to be an object, uh, you need to change the template as well, which is something we want to avoid. And uh, that's avoided if you are using the dot notation. But if you are in a tight loop, for instance, it might make sense to actually use those things. So if you are adding parentheses at the end, it means that's a method on an object, okay? So less flexibility, but more performance. And of course, don't change all your variable accesses with these kind of things. By default, use a dot notation. And if you are in a tight loop, and if you can measure that actually you would have a gain in terms of performance by switching to a more specific call, then do that. Uh, the next tip about performance, and that's also related to the dot notation, as the dot notation is what is really slow in Twig, or slower than anything else, it's not really slow, it's just more, it's slower than anything else. What you can use before PHP 7 is you can install the C extension. So we have a small C extension that replaces uh, the dot notation and it's way faster um, than uh, the PHP code. You can expect an increase uh, of about 15%. It really depends on the number of dot notation that you are using in template, of course. Um, it's only available for Twig 1 because Twig 2 is only for PHP 7. And as of PHP 7, the, co the PHP code is actually as fast as the C extension. Right? So you don't need the extension anymore in PHP 7. How many of you are actually using PHP 7 in production right now? Okay, so you should upgrade. Uh, I mean, it's free perf performance for free. Uh, it's compatible. Um, great new features, so I think that just makes sense. Okay, so the dot notation is great, but sometimes, and especially in Drupal, you have special variables like, you know, dash something, and of course you can't, no, not of course, you can't do dot dash markup, it doesn't work. In such a case, what you can do is, you can use um, attribute, so attribute is a function defined uh, by, Symfony, uh, by Twig, and you can say, I want the markup, the dash markup attribute on the site, uh, whatever uh, variable you want, right? That's the second line here. Or you can use the, uh, the array. If you're using the attribute function, it's exactly the same as the dot notation. So markup can be um, an array item or um, a method call or whatever. The last one is also interesting and that's the first use case for the attribute uh, function is to get a dynamic attribute on something, right? So var here can be whatever you want. And you, of course you can't say something dot var because var would be interpreted as a string and not the value of the var variable, right? Okay, another uh, great tip for performance and that's available as of Twig, Twig 1.26. And I think the latest version of Drupal 8 is on Twig 1.32, so it's available in, in, in Drupal 8.3, um, is that, so when, we, when you create an extension, and that's also only if you are creating extensions. So an extension is a way to create new tests, new filters, new tags uh, for your templates. So by default, an extension is about the definition of your new filters, tags, and, and functions, but it's also about the runtime implementation. And the runtime implementation uh, can depend on services, services that are expensive to create. But as Twig creates all the extensions, even if you are not using some of them, it can cost a lot to actually just create the extension and the dependencies. So what you can do as of Twig 126 is to actu actually decouple uh, the definition from the runtime extension, the, the runtime uh, implementation. If you are doing that, uh, the runtime uh, implementation will only be included and the dependencies will be uh, created only if you are using some of the things defined in the extension. 
So you can have a look at the Symfony uh, code base for some uh, examples. Okay, the next topic I want to talk about is defensive uh, programming. Um, this one is kind of uh, interesting is, so whenever you're using variables, sometimes a variable does not exist, and so what are you doing if the variable does not exist, or if the variable is uh, empty, uh, what is the default value, and things like that. So, when you check if a variable, like the first example here, it checks that the variable is not null, or empty, or zero. Right, so if that's the case, then you enter the, the, the if uh, condition. But that only works if variables is actually defined. If it is not defined, you will get an error. The second one is almost the same as the first one, but here we are saying, okay, we are checking that the variable is not nil, empty or undefined, but if it's not defined, then uh, we have the default value here, which would be a user. And you can be explicit uh, with is defined. So here, if you are not sure that the variable is actually defined by the PHP code, what you can do is checking that the variable is actually defined. So that's a good practice uh, if you're not sure that the variable is actually defined. In Drupal 8, if you enable the debug mode for each template, you have uh, uh, as a command at the top of uh, the file all the variables that are actually defined and that you can use in any given template. So we have a bunch of safe words, uh, like you can check if a variable is null or if it is empty. And the last one is something I don't recommend you to use because it's related to the type of the variable is same as means I want to check that this is, this is really zero, the integer zero, not the zero as a string. Uh, if you're not saying same as, you know, PHP uh, doesn't care if zero is actually a string or an integer, so it would be true in both cases. And sometimes you need to be sure that it is actually this exact uh, value and exact type. I, again, I do not recommend you to use that, but I think it's uh, interesting to know that it, it exists if uh, that makes sense for you. When you iterate over a collection, um, the for loop is almost the same as uh, in PHP, but we have some more features like, you know, you iterate over a collection and if there is nothing in the collection, then there is an else. So uh, you can fall back to something else. Uh, even more interesting is that you can add a condition in the for loop. So I want to iterate over all the items in collection only if item is actually published. And the else is going to be entered if there is no published items in the collection. So that's, we're trying to find ways to uh, give you more uh, ways to express what you want in less code. That's one of the main goal of templating system actually. Okay, um, talking about uh, checking things and be sure that uh, everything exists, when you include a template into another one, you're not sure if your menu that twig actually exists. Um, this one is probably exists because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just a string, a uh, static string, but sometimes you want to include a dynamic one. So you want, depending on the user name here, I'm going to include a different template, right? So tilde here means concatenation, right? So users slash the username and slash and bio the twig. But if the username uh, directory here does not exist, then you will have an error. So the way you can uh, fix that is that first, you can fall back to other templates. So you can say, so here the way it works is I want to include the first template, but if it does not exist, then you can fall back to the second one, and if the second one does not exist, then you can fall back to the th third one, right? So it's great if you have a default uh, template that you can use. So if the user actually um, uh, want to customize a template, you can, you, you will have the first one. If not, you can fall back to the default one that is the same for everyone. Okay, 
Um, but sometimes it's not really possible to provide fallback. It's just if it's there, you need to include it. If it's not there, then you should not do um, the include. So you want to ignore the fact that there is a missing template. So that's possible um, as well. So that's the first line here on the slide. You include a template, but you ignore if it is missing, which means that if the template does not exist, it, um, um, the output will be nothing, just an empty string, right? No error, nothing. It also works with a lot of uh, different construct, and I'm going to talk about those constructs uh, later on. Okay. Um, okay, so those are the filters defined by Drupal 8 uh, by default. Um, and of course, at some point, you know, so Drupal will add some more over time. And, and could be the case that at some point some of those could be deprecated. So for instance, the Drupal underscore escape, I would really like to uh, remove that one uh, and just use the standard escaping mechanism from Twig. We don't know. So right now it exists, but perhaps in, in one, two, three, or in the next major version, it's not going to exist anymore. In Twig, we have a mechanism to actually declare that a filter is deprecated like this. So we say here we have an old filter is deprecated and the new one uh, is that a new filter, filter, right? And those deprecation notices, uh, they are using the same mechanism as the Symfony one and the Drupal one. Um, I'm not sure and I'm pretty sure it's not displayed yet or logged yet, but it's there, which means that uh, if it happens at some point in Drupal, you will have a log saying, okay, it still works now, but you must know that in the future, probably in the next major version, you need to upgrade from this old filter to the new one. Right. So it's great because it still works and it gives you time to actually upgrade your code to the newest way of doing things without breaking things badly when you upgrade to the newest major version. Okay, um, this one is also interesting. Sometimes you want to check if a block exists or not. Um, and I wanted to talk about this one because it's about consistency and auto-discovery. So here, the is defined, I've, I've talked about that uh, before, uh, if a variable is defined, but you can put a lot of different expression before is defined and, and Twig tries to do the right thing. So here, I want to know, and I think it's quite explicit really, if the block title is defined, then we include the block. If it does not exist, then uh, the condition is false. So it, we are doing a lot of things like that, and it's, it's brand new actually, but it's, it's, it's great for consistency, um, it's a new feature, and auto-discovery is great because you can probably guess that if um, that should work, and actually it works. Okay, I like this one. It's not really a tip or a feature or whatever, um, but I, I get so many um, issues about this one that I, I need to talk about it. So basically, that on the left side, this is a tweak template. It's really just HTML, and, and the HTML version is exactly the same, right? But you probably have something like that, right? And you want indentation for your tweak template, and it generates that code which is not intended the right way. Does it matter? No, no way it matters. We don't care. We don't care about that. Uh, but I know that a lot of people actually uh, care about those kind of problems because they have a lot of issues about how we can fix that. There are many ways you can fix that. The first one is you can unindent things in the tweak template so that the generated code is actually done in the right way. Or what you can do is you can add minuses here like that and on the left side and that would remove uh, the spaces, right? I would not recommend to use the space space tag because this one is kind of slow because it needs to parse things in there to remove all the white spaces. So the one on the left is done at compile time uh, the one on the, uh, on the right side, the space tag, is done 
uh, at runtime, right? So that's the big difference. That's my advice. <laughs> I mean, I think that makes sense because you are working on the Twig template. So that's where the code should be nice and clean. You're not working um, on the HTML pages and, okay, I'm going to tell you something. The browsers, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. And it's not, it's not about optimization because sometimes people are saying, okay, but I want my HTML code to be, to be optimized so I want to remove all the white spaces. If you want to do that, then you can probably compress the HTML. And it's going to be uh, probably much better than trying to optimize the white spaces. But sometimes you do want to add some white spaces. Like this. This is an example in Drupal. Uh, sorry. Um, so here you can see that um, I don't have a space, a white space between H2 and uh, the title attributes here. Why? Because if title attributes is empty, then I have a nice H2 tag, right? No spaces. Um, and if title attribute is not empty, then title attributes actually adds uh, the space. So again, the HTML is clean, but the, the template is not. So I would not recommend to do that. Um, and, okay, so, now, that's how I think it should be. And, again, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, that works. That works. Um, <laughs> you get the point, all right? <laughs> no. um, okay, next one. Um, here again, I don't have the white space. And you can see that if I want to add a name, then I want to add class hidden. Two problems here. The first one is the white space, but the second one is that I have some HTML attributes in a string, which is not good, right? HTML should be in HTML, Twig is something else, right? Should be separated. So what I would like to do is this, which is much better. Now the HTML attribute is in the HTML part, and Twig is only responsible for um, uh, displaying the hidden or outputting the hidden uh, string or not. And again, having a class, an empty class here is not a problem. And actually, I did a check. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, okay, I, I won't have time to talk about this because, uh, okay, so that, that's how you can debug things. I thought I, I, I removed that uh, from the presentation um, and I decided to not talk about that because there are several pages in the Drupal 8 documentation just about that, so, and, and documentation is pretty good, so I don't need to talk about all those things. <laughs> Escape, okay, right. This one is way more interesting, actually. How can you reuse templates? And that's very important because I think that's one of the main um, selling point of Twig versus using PHP for templates. We have many ways to reuse uh, templates because of course you don't want to copy paste things in your templates or at least not often. So we have many different ways you can um, reuse things I think extends and include are the two main ones. Uh, macro sometimes, embed, uh, I'm going to talk about this one because it's not easy to understand, sometimes. Set, you should not use set. So if, if in a template you are assigning an HTML snippet of code into a variable, that's a big no-no you need to switch to something else. It means that you need an embed most of the time or an include or whatever. But don't use set uh, for uh, trying, if you are trying to use some uh, piece of code. I will give you one example where it might make sense to use set. Okay, extends, that's the easy one. I think um, 
everyone knows about this one. It's like inheritance in PHP. So you have a bunch of pages um, and you can see that most of the pages have the same layout. So you have one layout plus um, the contents that you want to be different depending on the page. So the way it works in Twig, we have a template with two blocks. So a block is really uh, a hole in a template where you want to be able to change the content depending on the page you are working on. So that's kind of an abstract thing. Uh, the layout w will never ever be displayed by default, right? You need to extend it uh, and put something into uh, the block uh, uh, tags. And Acme website here is just a default value if you do not extend it in a template. So now, this is a real template that I want to display. It extends the layout, and then I am defining the blocks, the title block and the content block. If I'm not overriding the title block, the default value defined here would be displayed. Okay, so that's a great way to create the, the main layout of your uh, website or theme, whatever. Um, and if you have a more complex website, you might want to actually have several layers of layouts. That works as well. So a layout can extend another layout. And that's how you can, you know, um, customize your layout and be more precise uh, depending on, on, on the website. So you can have one main layout, then you can have layouts for each sections of your website and then pages. You can have as many levels as uh, you need, actually. So that's the first way you can reuse uh, things. Um, the second one is include. So include is really uh, like in PHP. So you store uh, a snippet of uh, HTML and you want to include that into many different templates. So it's more about being able to reuse fragments of code. Um, it works well, well for sidebars or menus if they are not part of the main layout, of course. If, if they are part of the main layout, then you don't need an include. Includes are also great if you want to um, decouple things or if you have a very large template with large chunks of HTML code, you can you know, just extract that part of the code into an include. That's also a great way to organize your templates. So it's not really about reusing things, it's more about organization. Okay, a macro is a bit like an include the big difference being that you want to uh, be explicit about the variables you expect in uh, the HTML snippet. So here, I could use an include for that kind of things, but here I want to be able to uh, customize the ID, the label, the type, and I want to be explicit about that. And you can't do that with a macro, um, because a macro has a name and it takes some arguments. Right, that's the big difference with the include. Yes, include can also take um, variables, uh, but it's less uh, explicit than macro. And the other difference with include is that you import a macro and then you can use the macro. Underscore self means that I want to import a macro from the current template and not from another template. Sometimes it makes sense. And if you want, um, um, for, for, for bigger websites, um, I recommend you to create one macro that twig template or several ones where you store all your macros that are used uh, on your um, website. Makes sense if, if the website is more complex, uh, of course. Okay. Embed. This one is very tricky, actually. It's a mix between extends and includes. Sometimes it makes sense uh, to use that. Uh, and this is the typical example where it makes sense. You have a grid-based design and you want to be able to reuse some of the structure of that web design. So for instance, here you can see that we have two different pages and the first red block is exactly the same in terms of structure, not the contents. The structure is the same for both pages. And I don't want to copy-paste the structure 
uh, on the two uh, pages. And even on the second one, you can see that I have three lines with the exact same structure. And again, I want to do that and be able to reuse the same structure. So you can't use include because when you include something, you are including the structure plus the contents. So that doesn't work. Um, you can't use extend because if you are extending your grid, as you see on the second, pages, uh, second page, uh, the example, we have three times the same structure and you can't extend several times for the three lines, so that doesn't work as well. So we need something else. And the some, something else is actually um, using embed. So the first thing is you define a template, which is just a structure, so it looks like a layout really, right? Uh, with blocks first part. And then in your template, you don't extend, you embed. So you include the template and you extend because you want to be able to uh, define the contents for each block. Yeah? Does that make sense? Not at all. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, 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 it's not easy to really understand that. So let me try again. So I think I'm going to talk about the second example on the right side. Here, I have three lines. Each line has the exact same structure, HTML structure. But of course, the contents of the boxes are totally different. I want to be able to reuse the structure for each line and be able to actually uh, change the content. So what I do is I create a template which is This one, this, this is just the structure of a line, right? I have a div and three blocks, okay? But as you can see, the three blocks are empty, so there is no contents in there. It is just about the structure. And then I need a way to actually add this structure three times with different contents, all right? And that's where you are using the embed tags. So on, on this example, I would have three times this embed block, each time with different contents. Right? It, mean, it means that the final template would have um, the contents, but not the structure because the structure is defined in another template. Is that better? Makes more sense? Okay, so we have documentation on the Twig website so you can read it again and I think you really understand how it works when you are actually trying that on a very, your, uh, your uh, own templates and, and examples and you say, ah, oh, okay, I understand now. Okay. Um, wow, time flies. Uh, <laughs> okay, so just one quick example of um, when you, you can use set is for navigation, for instance. So if you have a navigation that is actually repeated on, on a page and you don't want to put that into an include, an include would be better, but you don't want to do that because it makes um, the template less readable, right? Because you need to have uh, to reference another template to and, uh, and go elsewhere to actually see the code, what you can do is you can set the navigation in a variable and then display it twice. I would not recommend that, but sometimes you don't have a choice or that's easier. Okay. Next up is dynamic templates. Um, so when you include a template or when you extend a template, the parameter is actually a string, and the string is actually a path to a template on your file system. Or at least most of the time, that's how it works. But sometimes the templates are stored in a database, or you want to define a template directly into a template. Why not? That's the example I have here. Um, here, I s I'm setting a variable code with a template, as you can see, that's a tweak template, right? 
And then I want to be able to include that. So what you can do is you can use a template from string function. What it does behind the scene is it takes the code, it parses the, the, the code, it creates a PHP class, which is a template, as any other template. So that's fast. It's not like eval in, in, in PHP, right? Uh, and then you can include a template. So it means that include and extends and embed takes a string or a template, which is a, a PHP object that you can create directly from a trick template with template from string. So this one is also very interesting if you store your templates in a database because you can then load the templates from the database in your PHP code, pass the templates to um, your um, templates and then include them directly like that, right? Okay, and you can do whatever you want. So you can modify um, the template if you want. You can do whatever you want really in the tweak template and then include that. Okay, source. Uh, source is uh, very, so th this example is not great because I should have uh, taken another example, but source is like include, but we do not evaluate the template. So source is really about getting some piece of text and including it directly without evaluating the template as twig, right? Include, we evaluate, and we display, we out, the output is really the, um, the template evaluated. Source, we take the, the content as a blob, we don't care about what, what's in there, and we just output the, um, uh, the, block, the, the blob um, directly into your template. Okay, um, so this is a website and the two white boxes can be customized by, by admins or end users. So in the admin, you have a, sorry, a text box when, where people can actually put some um, twig. So they can put some tweak uh, syntax in there. The problem is that um, you can't trust those templates, right? Because they do have access to all your variables. So potentially they can, you know, if you, if you have an object in there with a delete method, they can call that and you don't want that. Um, so in Twig, what you can do is you can sandbox. Uh, your templates, um, and and the sandbox, uh, it's it's only for untrusted templates, of course, and it restricts what you can do within the sandbox. So we have um, a policy where you can say exactly which methods, which filters, which tests, so every, everything. And remember, everything is actually part of extensions, which means that you can disable everything, even for if, if that makes sense for you. That's possible. Okay, so that's, that's the way it can be saved. So the way you can do that is we have a sandbox tag or you can, put, or you can pass an option which is sandbox equal true. If you are using sandbox, then we are going to evaluate your um, tweak code within uh, a sandbox. And the way you define your security policy is by creating a, a PHP object. As you can see here, you can define exactly. So by default, everything is empty. So you, are, you have access to nothing, so you can't do anything. So you need to actually customize that and say, here are the tags that I can use, the filters, the methods, the properties, and the functions. And you pass that to the uh, sandbox extension. So this is a white list. So by default, there is nothing. Uh, you can't use anything. So here is a very quick example where you define which uh, tags and templates and methods you can use in your uh, code. Okay, I think I'm going to switch this one. Th th this one, this one is interesting. Uh, when you manipulate date um, and you want to change the time zone, you can do that with that time zone uh, thing, and it can also depend on the user time zone. That's something you can do uh, with the date filter, and the date filter is very different from the date function like you can see here, if you want to compare the date, then you can do that like, like this. If the starts at 
date is um, more than now. That's how you can do that. Uh, so you can compare the date um, and you can also modify dates. So um, here I want to say, okay, early birds ends at 15 days before uh, the event actually starts, something like that. So I'm, I'm talking a lot about HTML templates, but of course Twig is not just for HTML templates. It can be for JSON, XML, TXT, whatever. Twig does not care about the content of your templates. That's not true because we have the escaping mechanism. Uh, and if you are doing uh, HTML, then Twig knows how to escape um, HTML attributes and, and JSON and, and CSS and, and, and JavaScript and things like that. But that's very interesting for emails, for instance. That, that's how uh, I'm actually managing my emails. Each email is actually one template where I define, that's just a very simple example, the subject, the body HTML, body text. So here we are using blocks, not because we are uh, in a layout, just because I want to define three different pieces that I'm going to use in a different way. So I'm never ever going to actually display such templates. It's just a nice way to actually um, separate different blocks of contents. And then, uh, this is how you can do that. So by default, if you want to render the template, you are using the render method. But as of Twig 28, 1.28, what you can do is you can render just a block. So then you can use Swift Mailer or whatever you are using to send emails and say, okay, here is a subject, here is the HTML version, here is the text version, and you can inject that into your email. Uh, quick tip, that only works, or it's guaranteed to work as of Twig 128, not before. Um, and you need to use the load method and not the load template method. Um, okay, if you want to learn more about that and why that's the case, you can have a look at the code. But basically, load uh, returns an object where we guarantee that render and render block are going to be stable. And we know what we'll, we are doing with that. The previous method was to use load template, which returns an internal object where render block was actually, or is actually an implementation detail that can change over time. That's why. Do you want some more cool features? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> first, last. We have a lot of things like that, uh, shortcuts. Uh, if you want the first value of an array or the last one, we will do that. Um, quick test, if you want to check if a URL starts with or ends with or matches a regular expression, um, that's nice. If you want to check that something is in something, we have an in uh, a test. So if password is in username, so you can see that we are talking about strings here, or if a method is in, in an array. So again, in works with strings and objects and arrays. Um, it works like you would expect it to work, actually. Name parameters. This one is uh, very interesting. So in PHP and in Twig by default, you pass arguments like this. So you convert encoding and you have two arguments. Who knows uh, um, what the first argument actually is? Is it the original core set or the target? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> and that, that's, very, that, that's, that's a problem. You don't know which is the, 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 the or, original call set and, and the target. And actually, if you have a look at uh, iconv and mbstring, they have the same function and the order is not the same. Yeah. Um, so what you can do in Twig, and that's not possible in PHP, is that what you can do is you can be explicit about the name of the arguments, right? So here, from and to, and we don't care about the other anymore because you are, you are explicit about the argument names, right? And those names are actually the names in the PHP uh, uh, signature. So which means that in PHP, it takes a dollar from and there are two arguments. That's even nicer for when you want 
to pass an argument which is not the first one and for the other ones you want the default values, right? So here, at the first example, I want to ignore uh, the missing template. So, I, and that's the last argument. So I need to put the default uh, empty variables and with context, you need to know that true is actually default. And then I can say, okay, I want to ignore the missing template. So that's the first problem. The second one is you're not very explicit, which means that if you don't know the signature by art, and I don't know the signature by art, empty, empty array and then true, true, you don't need what that means, right? True, true, that doesn't mean anything, right? So what you can do instead is you can use um, named arguments, and then you don't need to take care about the default ones. You can say ignore missing or true, and I think the second one is m ver more explicit and, and much better than the first one. Dynamic functions and filters, so when you define a new function or a new filter, you can use a star, and that means that it's going to match anything underscore path. So for instance, product path or article path or whatever you want. So it's a, a great way to define default, uh, um, uh, dynamic functions and filters. Don't do something I've seen in the past, which is star, PHP underscore star, star being any PHP function. You can, but you should not. Okay, and, and then the first argument you get in the function is actually the name, so that's, that would be product here or article. Okay. Doing things in batches, so going very quickly now. Um, so sometimes you, you have an image gallery, for instance, you have two lines with three things um, and you want to iterate over those, but you want to uh, display it like this. So what you can do is you iterate over all the images and if uh, i is actually divisible by three, then you create a new div and then you close the div, right? So you have uh, every three images, you have a new uh, line, right? That's kind of uh, ugly. Right? Mm -hmm. There is a much better way. You can say, I want the images by batch of three. Right? And then all of a sudden it, it, it's clear, it's, it's clean and, and very readable. Okay. Hmm. We can have a look at the documentation for this one. Right? So we have a bunch of Turning your operator, the first one is the basic one, and then we have a lot of shortcuts depending on what you want to express. The last one is very interesting. It was added in PHP as well. It means if the expression is defined and evaluate to something that is not false, then that's what we want, and uh, A is actually a default value. Yeah, so in templates, you want to use the first one and not the second one. Uh, again, it's, it's cleaner, it's easier to understand. Talking about, again, consistency and auto-discovery and, you know, things that just work the way you expect it to work, uh, we have uh, the brackets notation, which is really a combination of array slice and substring and substring. It works with arrays. You want the first three ones, the last three ones. It also works uh, with um, strings. And actually the type, you know, does not matter. So it works with objects that implement a countable or object that implement a two-string method or any object and the length of any object is actually one. Why not? Um, but that doesn't, the last one does not really make sense, of course. Dynamic. So I'm, I'm talking a lot about, about dynamic stuff uh, today. Um, so the first one is how you can uh, create a map. A is the key. B is the value, quick tip, uh, the, you don't need uh, the quotes around A. A, the second example is exactly the same as the first one, A is a string, and, and the question, uh, a very often asked question is, how can I have the key uh, as a variable? Just put parentheses around that, and you can put whatever expression you want. I would not recommend to actually have dynamic keys, but sometimes you need that, so that's also possible. New thing uh, added recently in, 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 in Twig, it's, uh, that's inner scopes. You can have a look at that in the documentation. 
loops. Everybody is aware of loop, the loop variable in Twig. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, no, this one is more interesting. So if you have a loop in a loop, in a loop in a loop, you can get backward if you want to get the loop variable. So the first one, the first loop is actually uh, the loop variable for the second uh, for loop. And if you want to access the first one, you can um, get loop.parent, which returns the context of the parent scope and then say I want the loop on that. So it looks weird loop dot parent dot loop, but it's really just the loop of the parent. Okay. Again oh it, okay so this one is uh, I, I've already talked about this one. So instead of uh, you know uh, having several uh, non named arguments, I would recommend to use names so that you really understand um, what we're talking about here. Um, but the thing is, the more you are adding options, uh, the less easy is the PHP code, uh, the uh, uh, underlying PHP code. So because you, you need to actually define all those uh, possibilities. But sometimes you have many of them, or an unlimited number of them, really. In that case, what you can do is you can use a variadic parameter uh, like this. So you have just an array, and it gets all the values and that works because um, uh, of the options uh, at the bottom of the screen is variadic to true. That means that instead of having each argument one after the other, I want all the options in one array and then you can do whatever you want with that. Okay, that's all I have for today. That's a lot. Um, I, I recommend you to actually have a look at the documentation, the Twig documentation and Drupal 8 documentation because everything I've talked about today is actually part of the documentation. If you are here on Friday, the sprints, and that's all. Thank you.